A while back I was looking for a rainy day project and I thought about this rotary encoder. I thought, you know, a couple hours and I'll, you know, put together something interesting with it. Um, it took a lot longer than that. I'll show you in the software why. Uh, there's a lot of uh, quirky things. Let's zoom in and I'll do a demo and you can see what this, uh, what this will do for us. What's going to happen is when I turn this clockwise, the number will go up. And I can give it a pretty good spin and it'll track what I'm doing. And when I turn backwards, it will go negative. It'll go past zero and into negatives. So yeah, you can use this to uh, to select over a very wide range of numbers. I think I have it uh, going from uh, minus 32,000 to plus 32,000, something like that. So it's got a very wide range. Okay, so uh, first let's go over the hardware diagram. And uh, then we will... Uh, look at the software, which is really the key aspect of this. The first bit of hardware is the encoder itself, and let's see how it works, because that will go a long way when we get to the software and you can see what we're doing. The inside of the encoder has a disc like this, and the copper colored part is actually copper, and the greenish part is an insulator, so this is actually like a circuit board and there is this contact printed on it in this shape for, us, for the reason you'll see. And over here we have another contact and this contact touches the uh, inner ring and so that the inner ring is always positive. And then we have these two contacts over here which as the disc rotates this direction you'll see first the A comes in contact with the copper which will make the A positive and then the B will come in contact with it as it turns, making it positive. And then the next thing will happen is the A will not be in contact with it anymore as it goes this way. And then the B, and we can see that over here in the table. Uh, at first it's zero, 0, as it is in the position right now. And then if we go over here, we can see that as the disc rotates one position, uh, the A becomes positive and the B becomes zero as we show here in the table. As it turns another position, A equals 1 and B equals 1, so these are both positive. They're both uh, in contact with this positive lead through the copper. And then if we turn it one more time, then as it says over here in the table, uh, A equals 0 and B equals 1, and like that. And then it starts the whole process over here. And clockwise is the same thing, only uh, counterclockwise rather is the same thing only it's turning the opposite direction and the table looks a little different. Now why this is important is because when it's in the zero zero state like this if the A turns positive first then you know it's turning clockwise and here if it's in the zero zero position and the B turns positive first then you know it's turning counterclockwise and so that's very important. You can also do the same thing from the 1-1 one, one position. If the B turns positive first, then you go, you're going clockwise. And from the 1-1 one, one position, if the A turns positive first, then you know you're going counterclockwise. So that's what's going on inside of our rotary encoder. Now let's look at the rest of the hardware. Here is the rest of the hardware. You can see on this side is an actual photograph, but because it's, uh, you know, it's a tangle of wires, it's rather hard to follow. I have kept the wire coloring the same over here on the diagram, so if you wish to freeze frame this and follow the wires, you can do that easily. Let's start with the rotary encoder. And the first line here is a purple line. It's clock. It goes to the D2, the digital 2 line. The digital 3 line from the Arduino is the data line to the encoder. And the center switch goes up here to D10. Then we have VCC and ground, and I've shortened both of these for clarity, but VCC goes over here to the three volt, and ground, of course, goes over here to the ground. Now, let's uh, go to the LCD screen. We can start with a clock line, and the clock line comes up here to A5. The uh, A4 line comes down here to the data line on the LCD. The power line, the 5 volts, comes up here to the 5 volt on the Arduino, and the black wire, the ground, is to the ground on the LCD, and that's it. So yes, this is uh, much simpler than it appears over here. Here's the software that makes it work. 
It's uh, written for the Arduino in C. It uses a rotary encoder and an LCD on, I, on the I2C bus. The rotary encoder is an HW040, and the clock line is on D03, and the data line is on D02, as we discussed over here. Uh, it needs two interrupts to operate this thing, so that's one of the first drawbacks. It, the interrupt 0 is on line 2, and the interrupt 1 is on line 3. Uh, the, for clockwise, this just repeats this table over here, clockwise table and the counterclockwise table is here. Detents are always at position 0, 0 or 0, 1. So they're either here at 0, 0 or uh, 0, 1 like this. Okay, um, it uses some interesting commands. I uh, went through about 12 different programs to see how different people were doing this. There's different ways to do it. The simplest way is polling without interrupts. However, I found that that was very unreliable. Uh, so I went to the interrupt method. And for the interrupt method, you're using some very unusual commands. The CLI, it clears the global interrupt flag in the SREG to prevent the interrupts from occurring while another interrupt's going on. And then the SEI sets the interrupt bit and switches the interrupts back on. So you're turning the interrupts off, and then you're turning them back on, and in between, you're doing some processing. The pin, it imports uh, the port D register. So in the UNO, this is uh, pins seven through zero over here, and it's just grabbing them all at once. And the reason we're doing that is it uh, keeps the values from changing during a load. So it's, uh, it does a volatile load from RAM. It's not doing it from the storage register. So this is the fastest way to grab to grab the data out of those uh, pins. And yes, if you're starting to say, wow, this seems kind of odd. Uh, it's, there's a lot of work going on here just to, to use this device. Yeah, it's, it's going to get worse. Okay, and the other note I have is this thing really likes to jump by 2S. Uh, because as I noticed, as I noted before, the uh, detents are always on zero zero or one one. So yeah, it likes to skip over these intermediate uh, steps and just go two steps at a time. Uh, but there's again, there's some code in here to prevent that. Okay, on to the includes. We need the wire uh, library for the I2C bus. We need the liquid crystal for the uh, liquid crystal display. Here, I uh, define the address, columns, and rows used in the liquid crystal. I define uh, pin A to be 2, and that is the D02 line right there. And then uh, pin B to be 3, and that's here. Then we have the volatile int integer. So uh, the, the uh, current encoder position. There, I have to struggle to get that out. Now you can change this value, you can change this from a volatile int, you can change it to an int, it'll go from minus 32,000 to plus 32,000. Uh, you can use the UNI 16 uh, to go from 0 to 65,000, or you can have a byte that goes from 0 to 255, and it will wrap around. Uh, the next one is volatile integer, last uh, encoder position, and yes, so this is to compare to the current reading to see if things have changed. Uh, this is uh, pins, so this is value from the interrupt pins, and again, this is to check to move a whole detent, so this must be a byte. And then a volatile byte, last pin, so these are last pin values. Okay, scrolling down. This next routine is the setup, which is, of course is required by the Arduino. And we are going to uh, create a communication link to the COM3. Uh, I'm using uh, 115,200, and the you know, faster is usually better. Uh, the next thing is we're going to set pin mode for pin A to input and pull up, so it's pulled high initially. Next one is pin B, and again, it's pulled up uh, initially. Then we are going to attach interrupt 0 to pin A. And we're going to set it to uh, the mode is, is uh, change. And then we're going to attach interrupt 1 to uh, pin B and again change. 
The next four commands are to set up the LCD screen. So we initialize that, we turn on the backlight, we set the cursor to the upper left corner, and then we write the encoder position initially. Then we come down here and we print the label for that, and then we print the encoder position. So this one sets it to the, uh, sorry, this one prints on the LCD, and this one prints on the COM3 serial. This next routine, which I've cleverly named X, is the most important routine. It kind of does everything. And what it's going to do is going to determine the rotation and it's going to determine where we are. And then it is going to either increment the position or decrement the uh, rotor position depending on the, the situation. So all these uh, conditions will, will tell us direction and position. The first line here goes out and uses this pin command and it goes out and grabs uh, pins seven through zero and we're only gonna keep A and B values. So we're looking for, you know, the zero, 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 one or zero, two, three, one numbers. The next thing is we uh, take that pins and we shift it by two. So we're gonna shift away the lower two bits so that we only end up with uh, a, a two bit number Next, we're going to look at the last pin. So this is a case based on last pins. Now, uh, what we're going to be looking for is the conditions of 0, 0, and 1, 1, because as I said before, depending on what comes after these, it tells us the rotation direction. Okay, so we start out with uh, a binary 1, 1. So case that last state is A equals one and B equals one. So that's A1, B1, and this B stands for binary. If pins equal B binary one zero, so we know that it's clockwise and the current position has moved from A equals one to B equals zero. And so we need to uh, increment the uh, encoder position. Otherwise, if the pins are at zero and one, so A equals zero and B equals one, then we need to decrement the encoder position. So again, this tells us clockwise and counterclockwise. The next case is B zero zero, so that the last state was A equals zero and B equals zero, so it's one of these, A equals zero and B equals zero. Um, Yes, and if the pins equal B01, so binary 01, so that means A equals zero and B equals one, then we need to increment, increment the uh, position. Otherwise, if it's uh, binary one zero, so A equals one, B equals zero, then we need to decrement the position of the encoder, and then there's the break. Uh, and then the default is to do something, which I'm not using right now. And then finally in this routine, the last thing we do is we take the pins information, the current pins information, and we save that to last pins because we'll use that uh, the next time through. Okay, moving down here to this uh, next one. This routine and this routine are what is called when an interrupt happens. So this is interrupt zero and this is interrupt one. So pin A, this is uh, the uh, interrupt on pin A, and this stops all the interrupts from happening until the processing is done. And this delay is here to debounce the switch because we're dealing with a mechanical switch. And so we need to give it some settling time, make sure we don't get multiple hits from one uh, contact. Then we call the X routine, which we just looked at. And then the last thing we do once all that is done is we restart the interrupts. And this routine does exactly the same thing, only it's the second interrupt. This is the print routine. And what happens is if the encoder has changed position, which is what this is, if the last encoder position is not equal to the current one, then we're gonna print the data on the LCD screen and we're gonna print it to the serial output, which is uh, COM3 over here. So I have that set up so it'll print on COM3. And then we will save the last encoder position. Uh, we will save the current into the last encoder position. 
And that's it for this routine. And then the last thing is just the uh, loop routine, which loops forever. It's the main routine. And it just calls this print. And this is waiting for an interrupt to happen. So this is just going along. Nothing is printed because nothing has changed uh, until somebody moves the encoder. And then once the encoder moves, it detects the difference in positions. And then it prints something and does all the increment incrementing and decrementing that we looked at earlier. Okay, so that's it for the software. Some concluding remarks. If we look over here at this COM3, and I'm going to move the encoder here off screen, and you know, as long as I move the encoder slowly, not much happens. But if I give it a good twist, see what's happening? It goes minus 1, it jumps to minus 4, minus 8, minus 11, minus 17. Yeah, that's because things aren't keeping up. This encoder is, is really resource intensive. And what I found is if I add any code down here to the loop, um, it just can't complete the processing before the, the next interrupt happens. And so this will get farther and farther behind. Um, and yeah, as long as, you know, as long as you treat it really nicely and you turn it slowly, it's okay. And as long as you have very little code out here. But once you start adding in the code, um, it, it just can't keep up. It's, it's just not practical. So if I was going to use an encoder, I would get like a, an Arduino Pro Mini, and I would make that dedicated to the, <laughs> to the uh, encoder, and then I would take the data and transmit that to say an Arduino Uno. But that's an awful lot of trouble just to have a, you know, a cool switch. Yeah, granted, it is cool. I really like it. But that's a lot of trouble just to be able to have that switch. But again, if, you're gonna, if you need it, if it's something like a bigger application, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you're making a home stereo setup, you want a digital control for that. Yeah, it's great. I mean, that, that would work. But if you're going to do something in the field, like you're setting up a, a, a data logger in the field, yeah, this is awfully resource intensive to do something like that. Okay, so yeah, I, I personally like it, but again, I, I'm not sure I'm going to use it very much. Okay, well that was it for the rotary encoder on the Arduino. I hope you found it useful and interesting in your Arduino hardware and software endeavors.